Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We're back at it. We're looking at another breakdown. This is a small snippet from a much larger breakdown. If you like this way of learning cinematography, uh, which I do, this is the way that I learn cinematography. Uh, I like to look at other people's work, examine it, figure out how they did it, take what I like, and then try it out for myself, right? If you like that, uh, the best spot to do it is over on Patreon. We do a new video each and every week. It's a feature film or a uh, long form episodic. We look at, we break it down, we try and figure out how they did everything. Sometimes, I mean, well, all the time, I'm just making it up. But uh, if you can recreate what you've seen, well, then you're making it up and it's actually working. That's probably a good thing, right? You're rehearsing in your mind what you would do to solve these problems. And we're trying to figure out what they did to solve those problems. And in the end, uh, that has been beneficial for me and I hope it's beneficial for you. So if it is, uh, Patreon's a spot to do it. Today, we're looking at dark and what we're trying to get out of this little sequence is how to expose for windows when you're inside, how to expose for windows so that they don't blow out, but then also be able to light the talent on the inside of the room. So it's like uh, what normally happens when you just expose for the windows not being blown out, well, then that brings down all of the level inside and it doesn't appear to light the scene. So then what do you have to add on top of that? Or what tricks can you use with the coverage, with the light sources themselves to make it easier to be able to push level into the room while still holding the windows? Because I often talk about this, this is one of the main, main things that I look for is exposing to what you can't control. And in this situation, we cannot control the level outside of the windows. I mean, we probably could if you had a big enough crew, but just say that you can't. Well, now we have a problem. We cannot control out there. So we have to expose for that. And then we have to come up with solutions for everything else. And this is 90% of shooting interiors. You're going to be up against this challenge. Uh, so this is a great example of how to do that because uh, a lot of the times you want to shoot along the windows, shoot along the light sources. Here, we can't do that. We have to look directly at the windows, which become the light source for the rest of the scene. So seeing how you tackle that will hopefully uh, make it easier in the future when you will definitely, you will 100% come up against this situation. If you have never seen this stuff before and you're seeing it for the first time on set, chances are you stumbling upon the right solution, almost zero, right? But if somebody's already done the hard work, you can see the results and go, do I like those results? Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty good. Okay, well, just take that trick. Take what exactly what they did and then make it your own and then tell everyone that you came up with it. Or in fact, no one's going to ask because you don't even have to tell them. You just say, well, yeah, this is how we do it. This is this is how we do it. This is how we's always, we've always done it this way. In fact, even when you've never done it, you can say, we've always done it this way. Like, this is how you expose for the windows and it's going to look nice. Trust me. Um, they're going to say, well, how do you know? Yeah, I'm a cinematographer. Dude, come on, get with it. Okay, so let's get into this little breakdown. Watch for the windows. Watch for how the coverage is centered around what turns out to be the main light source. And you're going to be a better cinematographer for it. Let's go. So this hospital stuff we have talked about, I think probably more than any setup before. What have they chosen to do? Oh, practical, not on? This is a revolutionary show in cinematography. We're going above the bed hospital practical, which is different than light from the window practical because it gives us this pooly look here, right? This like, this angle of pooled light versus coming through with sun from the outside. I mean, again, beautiful sheer curtain combo here. They certainly know what they're doing. Add a little bit of depth with this thing, right? Like put it in the shot. This is just a C-stand here. And we'll just put it in to the level that we desire. Now, the interesting choice here is, so we are now, this one we're looking sort of dead down the line, right? And this is a beautiful looking shot here. Just getting enough level around this little kid's face. It looks like it's been lifted quite a bit there. So he would have been quite dark on the day. Even here though, we're getting level this way on her, and then we're getting that natural daylight coming in, but it's really, really down. And then the beautiful production design in the background, mixed with the colors here, shooting along the bed. This is just a, a nice looking shot. As we come in here, we swap to the other side. We're gonna do our little track push in, again, creating depth with all the angles that we can, but we're looking into this flat wall. And okay, uh, who knows if this is studio, if this is real, doesn't really matter either way, but got good edge on her, and we've got our good little fill coming this way from wherever that light is. But now as we keep going, keep going, we cut to the singles, like the meat of the conversation, right? We're going to get into it here. I don't know about that little dip there on that move. And we cut around to the front. Now that is an important choice for the look of the, I mean, that is the only choice really for the look of this entire scene. Did we have to cut this? Is, now, essentially, as soon as she turns her back and sits down here, we now have a situation. Let's see if we can go a little bit further. Does she ever sit down? Oop. Right there. 
Uh, so this now becomes the bar scenario that we've looked at so many times, right? Well, how do you shoot people at a bar when they're sitting on the same side of the table? It's an awkward thing. You've got two choices because in a bar, much like this, the light usually comes from behind the bar, okay? So those are your only, you can either stay on this side of the line or you can do the flop to the other side. The problem with doing the flop to the other side of the line is if we're going over there, all of our light is coming this way. So it's going to be fronty and it's going to flatten off and it's not going to look very good. So your choice is to stay here or to flop. They've chosen to stay here, to, to flop, sorry. And when they flop, really hard to get shape in here. I mean, we can't, we can't add this little light that they've added here, but it's hard to get any detail in here. The solution would be we stay on the other side and we do the French over or the, you know, the Wallaka Woozy, whatever we want to call it. We just make up names for these things. It's basically this shot, but on the back. So looking over the back of this lady. So you're doing, yeah, French overs basically. So his face would be looking that way still, but we're on that shoulder. And now you see how much more interesting we can make this window light if that is the case, because we don't have to flatten it off as much. There can be, you can go way darker, way, way darker. So he, even here, the same thing. I mean, it would be really hard to do because she's playing this forward quite a bit, which is why I'm imagining they chose this one, right? They're not playing it to each other as much. So if you're not playing it to each other, it's harder to do on this shoulder. Really, you have to get the people like looking at the other, like turning their head. If they're playing it straight forward, it's, it's more difficult like that angle. You like see how f it's sort of flat. I mean, there's a little bit of shape to it because you got that backlight there. You got the day coming through. But just imagine now if we were on the other side here, looking back this way, you could go way more on the darkness and way more on the carry. And then cut again, back to the same flatness. You know, and there's not a lot of depth back there because it's so shallow. Just sort of flattens it off and makes it feel like he's floating. And again, the angle, you know, now we've reached around a little bit versus the, the boy's angle. Reached around a little bit further. Got this nice little, again, nice little hot spot in the background from the lamp. And no eye light for anybody just because you, where you would put the eye light, the person is blocking, right? So if you're going to get an eye light in this lady's eyeballs, you have to have it just this way of camera in line between her eyeball, between her eye and the eye light, this kid is blocking it. So you're not going to be able to get an eye light in there if you want to carry this anymore. And that is shallow. What's he doing? What's he going to react? Also, if you have in your mind, you have this um, idea in your short, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go film in a hospital and it's going to be amazing. I've shot in a bunch of hospitals that all look like shit. No hospital looks like this. Right? You're not going to get these cool blue walls with this amazing production design of the curtains and the perfect shears. Your thing is going to be white walls. It's going to be boring. It's going to look like shit. <laughs> so just be prepared, I guess is what I'm saying. All right, perfectly timed. Anytime I record a video, dude next door decides it's time to do the lawn. And in fact, it never gets better. So that whirring that you hear in the background, hopefully I'll be able to cut it out. Uh, that is dude mowing lawn next door, which is awesome because it's also the hottest day in Australian history. And he decided at noon, it was a great time to go outside. So winning with the neighbor. And for you, what does that mean? I've got nothing. I can't even remember what I was talking about because the noise is so loud and I just want to go crazy. I'm not going to re-record this exit. This is it, right? This is the quality that you get when you stay to the end of the video. And I know there are the one percenters out there. I asked one time, does anybody stay till the end? There's 1% of people that do. That's you. Guess what you got to learn? My neighbor, bit of a D-bag, right? And he's decided to mow the lawn on the hottest day at noon. Choices, people. I guess that's something you could, you could carry that over to cinematography. It's like you can make really poor choices or you can make good choices. I would say poor choices. It's actually me in this situation, isn't it? I've decided to record the video at the time old mate is out there uh, trimming dead grass. So win for me, not for you. That's going to do it for this one. Many thanks. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.